Welcome to Book Time with Ryan. I am Ryan, and today I will be talking about The Curse of Bigness by Tim Wu. This is Antitrust in the New Gilded Age. Yep, it is not, in fact, a dieting book. As much as that would help me, this is about monopolies and trusts. And what Tim says is the New Gilded Age. How did I find this book? It's short. It's a short book. It has uh, about 140, with the acknowledgments and further reading, 145 pages. That's a pretty quick read, and it's it's small. See, my hand is a normal size hand, I think, and uh, it's about the size of my hand. I mean, it's about the length of my hand. I guess it's kind of almost the size of my hand too. All right, so uh, how did I find out about this book? I was in a car, uh, my car, and I, I have a lot of different subscriptions. I don't pay for it, it came with the car, which is used, it was given to me. And uh, one of them is some kind of like podcast radio thing. This is a Tesla. Uh, it, I don't know what it is, but at some point after I got the car, I said, listen to Freakonomics podcast, Freakonomics radio podcast. And so, so I did that. I figured out that I had that. I could do that. And we were driving down to the Outer Banks for vacation. And I, I did that. I said, listen to Freakonomics radio podcast. And the podcast was about the glasses industry and which I have glasses and and basically just about how there's one huge player and one of the people that was interviewed was Tim Wu talking about monopolies and that's on our way down and then when I was coming back I did it again and it was part two of that podcast so again Tim Wu was on it and I decided I'm gonna get his book the Curse of Bigness, Antitrust, and the New Gilded Age. And I enjoyed it. Tim Wu, I think, worked for the Obama administration at some point and also for the uh, Federal Trade Commission, the FTC. And he has some pretty, I think, I don't even know if I'd call him strong. I think that's reasonable. Some pretty reasonable points of view on monopolies. This book is really, we go through early on, we go through kind of the history of trusts and the antitrust movement. Uh, of course, the big thing that happened in, I think it was 1890 or 1895, 1890, was the Sherman Antitrust Act, the Sherman Act, uh, which wasn't really used too effectively until uh, Theodore Roosevelt, the trust buster, and then Howard Taft used it even more uh, President Howard Taft, President Theodore Roosevelt. So, I've I know about trusts. I know about monopolies, but it really the the initial monopolies and trusts that they were they were tackling were some of the big ones: uh, Standard Oil, a lot of different railroad um, trusts, U.S. Steel, uh, the, the trusts with guys by the name of Rockefeller, Morgan, Vanderbilt, old school robber baron names, and kind of goes through the heyday of antitrust action, the 1960s, 50s, 60s, and 70s, and then the low points, which are the 80s through kind of now. And it goes through those early trusts, but then also into modern day ones, which are more focused on, I mean, there are plenty of examples, you know, the tech ones are probably the most recent questions on consolidation. Basically, the way that antitrust has been interpreted over the years, the changes in how to use the Antitrust Act, Sherman Antitrust Act, which was modified by a number of acts, uh, has been modified by the courts, um, for good and for bad, probably. And... Uh, that's that's where we are with it. That's kind of it's not going away. Uh, you can look at a number of companies today that 
really do have a monopoly or seemingly have a monopoly. They may have different names, uh, but they may all fall under the same parent company. And that's kind of the tricky thing is you may think, well, there's a lot of competition in this area. And then you find out that all those different brands are actually owned by the same company. And uh, Tim also talks about how that consolidated power in private hands affects democracy. And the examples he gives were kind of Bismarck, Germany, Prussia, uh, and then pre-World War II buildup of Nazi uh, German power backed by German companies that wanted their guy in. And that there's a threat still in an environment where private power can be used to affect public good. Private power can be used to affect democratic institutions. And that's it. Like, I don't want to go too far into it. I don't want to name specific companies that exist now. You know, Justice Department and the FTC are welcome to do that. Uh, it was an entertaining read. It really took me maybe like two days, really one full day uh, with stops in between just because of life. But it's a quick read. It's For me, it wasn't eye-opening because I've already read some stuff about trust and, and monopolies and and how it hurts the markets. But uh, it's it's definitely an interesting read, and it's made for the layman. It's something that if you are not familiar with this area, you can appreciate it. It's short. It's sweet. It kind of lays out stuff that you'll come away from it thinking, well, why, why is this more not being done? And Tim Wu has his opinion on, on why that is. I think Tim Wu's... Uh, was f on the podcast was really funny and um you definitely get these little asides and comments in this writing that you're like ah there's that t funny tim Wu from the podcast so i found it interesting enter entertaining engaging and you know if this is an area that you're interested in check it out if it's not but you kind of feel like there's something out there more that you want to learn about this is a quick, easy read, and I recommend it. I give it four stars. For me, four stars in a business, economics, or finance book is a very high rating. So uh, I, I really enjoyed this and appreciated it, and you might too. So thanks for being here today. I will talk to you later. Of all things malign, an accidental